the CEO and co-founder of Nano Dimension, and you know, thank you, Philip, and the so for um, inviting me. I would like to present another um, perception or a vision about the changes that we all see in consumer products and generally in the world of manufacturing. There is a lot of um, talking about how things are changing in our world. We all feel it, right? We talk about user experience of customers, about how we can order products through the internet. We want to get our products fast, and we want to have them on demand. We need to have them customized. We want to choose the color. We want to use the um, potential of usage of, of some things. Um, actually, if it was possible, we would probably be interested in choosing more things, to have them even more customized. What we know about products today is that they become smart products. And it seems like there is another um, lift after a few decades when it was mostly about changes in software. If you think about it, laptops, even phones, they didn't change. I mean, they existed. But then in the last 10 years, we have this revolution. OK, we can, we can give some credit to Steve Jobs about putting the consumer in the center and connecting everything. But now, OK, just like we saw with Tactotech, and as we're all familiar, everything is a smart product. Everything, including shoes, including um, the curtains at home, they actually communicate sometimes. They can tell you it's time to. What I'm trying to get to is that all these new requirements impose a lot of challenges on manufacturers on one hand and on designers to the other hand. When we think about all the challenges about how can we support customization and how can we manufacture fast and also how do we consider the environment whether it's because people have more awareness or because of new laws how you protect things um, many of these things come together with the new concept which is called in many cases commonly as the fourth industrial revolution i'm sure that in this room, people have heard about it. And I'd like to touch some of the things that affect it. Now, I didn't start talking about nano dimension, what we're doing. I will get to that in a couple of slides. But just not to keep you too curious, I would say that what nano dimension is doing is bringing the advantages of additive manufacturing, of 3D printing, to the world of electronics. OK? I will get much deeper into that in a couple of slides. But today, we live in a world that has a lot of data. There is a whole new aspect of virtual world when we talk about manufacturing, also when we talk about design. And some of the core elements within this new concept of Industry 4.0 are talking about this digital production. There is data, and mostly that data is in a cloud. There are orders and there are decisions being taken with artificial intelligence. And the decisions affect a physical world of manufacturing. OK, because we have more and more customizations and we need more changes, industry relies less and less on mass production because a production line is something really expensive, and is trying to adopt more and more additive manufacturing, which is more flexible and allows making fast changes just by changing the design of a file digitally. You can use a 3D printer to change it. We see those things in products that we use. We see it on sneakers. Okay, you know, you can go to Adidas and you can make some customization. We see it on airplanes because you know that uh, Boeing, for example, they use advanced 3D printers for all kinds of, of uh, parts, whether it's polymers or metals. 
okay? But here's the problem. We don't see it yet in the world of electronics. So we do see a lot of advanced manufacturing that provides new solutions, but when we talk about pure additive manufacturing, it's not there yet. And when I think about the future of how manufacturing is going to be, um, what I see in mind is environments that use what we call distributed manufacturing. There are going to be more manufacturing closer to the co customers because it makes more sense. It reduces the need for shipment. The customers can get it faster. Um, of course, I'm talking about an environment where more additive manufacturing be is being used, and that means there's going to be less pollution, because additive means you're only using the parts that you need. There's going to be less shipment if it's going to be closer to customers. And this vision is, I, I, I hope it is not just my vision. I think we have more people in this room that understand that things are going there. Um, Additive manufacturing, 3D printing, is about taking raw materials, in most cases it's either ink or powder or liquid, and basically forming it. What Nana Dimension is doing is taking the concept of, not the concept, we're using inkjet technology, which is additive manufacturing, and we use our own materials, the nano silver, and our unique dielectric, which is a polymer with ceramic elements in order to print them together and to present circuit boards. Not just circuit boards, all kinds of smart products. We can 3D print in a very professional way sensors, circuit boards, flexible circuit boards. Um, but what's interesting, from a design perspective, we can do things that go beyond the existing boundaries of design. Um, what you see here is a classic PCB, printed circuit board, in which what we've done is just shown the different layers. You know that in every motherboard, if you take out of, from your computer, this uh, one or two millimeter actually have inside many layers, right? The reason the layers are flat is because you can only make horizontal lines, that's the means of manufacturing, and then you can drill the holes and fill them up and connect the layers. So we're talking horizontal and vertical. Now let's talk about needs of products today. Okay? Um, smart cars, all kind of IoT devices which are connected and have sensors, and suddenly everything seems to be changing. It's an evolution, it's a very good change, I think. It's, but when you think about the new challenges of designers on one hand and manufacturers on the other hand, connecting those challenges to, to the consumer that suddenly wants everything fast, customized, on demand, and smart, it's becoming a problem. That's really where we get into the picture with our technology. So a printer and nanomaterials and of course the software that can print all kinds of elements and what I have here are some examples of the things that we make. So if we take for example a smart shoe, what is a smart shoe? What can it do actually? What can it do? Well, it has to sense something. Maybe it will it will sense my step and it will count them, right? Um, maybe it will sense with a sensor some pressure in different areas of the foot, so it could give me some data. And one thing would always be collecting data with sensors. The other thing would always be, it is, communicate it because the shoe has nothing to do with this data. It has to go to the cloud and connect uh, either to my application on the phone or to some database or something could be done with it. And the elements of antennas on one hand and sensors on the other hand are, are key. Products are getting smaller and we want these elements to be smaller. We also want them through manufacturing to be in a 3D form because we don't necessarily want them flat. 
we might want to fit them as part of our production into a certain portion of, of the component that we're producing. Um, of course, printed circuit boards and sensors are not enough. We also need the other common and, and, and needed elements like um, memory chips and CPU and other components which when we can 3D print them, of course, it's going to be great, but we're still far from that. What we can do, on the other hand, is using our 3D printing solution in order to miniaturize the need of space. So if normally I would take a PCB or any element, and then I will take the memory chip, the next step is to solder that chip or set of chips on top of the PCB. What we can do is have them embedded. So on one, one thing would be to print and then place those components. The second thing would be to print on top the conductive traces. And we could also encapsulate it by basically printing on top of that. Um, so using that technique, which is very obvious when we talk about 3D printing, together with the ability to freeform design the lines in any directions that we want, could really help, on one hand, make a better usage of the space. On the other hand, better usage meaning miniaturize it, um, form new shapes that could be more suitable to products, Having that as an additive manufacturing process means I don't need to have a specific setup for a production line. That means I can support better the concept of on-demand customization because it's just a matter of how the design comes. Uh, we started selling the Dragonfly 2020 Pro, which is our um, main product, a few months ago. We already have... Um, sales in Europe, the US, Asia Pacific, it's going on very well. Right now it's more about R&D. We're not dealing with production. The throughput of what we can offer is not as high as, as manufacturing capabilities, but it's definitely interesting to see how the concept of Industry 4.0 aligns with the concept of additive manufacturing. And in my vision, we see how different technologies of additive manufacturing and maybe robotics on top can help setting up manufacturing facilities which are independent. You don't have to rely on a production line in Taiwan and, and then assemble things which are being shipped. I have a few more samples here. I don't have much time, but I would like you to see simple elements where we use we can embed components or, in, in this case, create some shapes and elements with a flexible PCB that are very difficult to manufacture with classic manufacturing methods. Um, I would like to say a few words about how these things are being enabled because if we talk to electronics engineers, they would tell us that they design using Gerber files. They have standard software that help them basically create the layers. But what we're talking about is to open up the mind and to do more things. And that's why we collaborated with SolidWorks and presented this plugin to the software that allows any designer, regardless of you know, which environment they come from, to make those things on SolidWorks and I hope with other products of the SOS system in, in the future. Um, a few more samples of things that have been 3D printed. Thermometer, a, a 3D printed electromagnet that can be used to produce a motor, for example, 3D printed. And I'd like to summarize just by saying that there are different things which are happening. Some of them can just be seen here in the exhibition with additive manufacturing, new materials, new requirements that are really going to make this field that, that I guess we're all interested in is to see how the world is changing and evolving um, very interesting in the coming years. 
My time is up. Thank you very much.